Wait, let me set the scene for you. It's grey, the ocean is rough, it's a little bit windy and it's not cold. I don't know, even better, I'll show you. That's what's currently above our heads. That's what I'm aiming for. The blue serenity. I want to represent that within this content and today I haven't made bread in a while. I've seen one of you loyal subscribers, followers, beautiful people have requested that I make a sourdough. So here's my sourdough starter. He's currently sleeping so we can't do sourdough yet and plus I want to do something that you guys are able to recreate yourselves. So we're going to get onto something a little bit more manageable, a little bit less uh, intricate and you don't need as much technical skill. It starts with oh, a Polish, oh yes, ah, yeasty fermented deliciousness and if you want to know how to make this, sit back, relax and we'll get into the content. Okay, a polish starts with yeast, sugar, warm water, then flour. Mix it around and when you get a consistency like this, package it up, leave it on the counter overnight. It's really that simple and it implements so much delicious flavor in our bread. For our polish, all you need is some yeast, equal parts, water and flour. And a little bit of sugar as well. And we're going to get into our bread. So it's a we're making a large polish bread today. Real easy, real simple. I think on my YouTube shorts, it's one of the ones that is currently going viral or has gone viral. So, I mean, that's dope. The amount of satisfaction that you get when making bread is so addicting. And I hope each and every single one of you get the bread itch. I've got about, what's that? Pretty close to 30 kgs of flour, like two meters away from me. Oh, I'll show you. Completely stacked up. The bread itch is real. Any high grade or bread flour that you get at the supermarket will do you for this recipe. First step, first step, we're going to dissolve our polish in water. And don't worry guys, I'll chuck all the measurements in the description. Once we have a milky consistency, you can see not much resistance going on. We can put that to the side. Mixing bowl time, mixing bowl time, please. If you don't have one, you can still do it by hand. Dry ingredients, salt, flour. Just incorporate that a little bit. Shake, 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 and add the whole thing in. All we gotta do now is kick back, relax in the next 15 minutes, drink some mate if you have some, take the kids to school, whip up your station or any lunch that you have, I don't know. Relax, bro. Our bread goes right there on the target. I'm using a baking mat because it's way easier for the cleanup. Bread is high hydration, so it tends to stick on the surface, the bench. But don't worry if you don't have one, warehouse, real cheap, 10 bucks. If you don't have that, just use your bench. Seriously, just use your bench. It's all good. If you don't want to need it for 15 minutes, if you're doing it by hand, 10 minutes is all good. I've got one of these with a little bit of water on it. If you don't have one of those, spatula will be just as good. Scoop all the dough out and you can see how much it sticks. It's real shit house to work with at the moment, okay? That's all you need to know. I've got a bench scraper and I'm just going around one, two, three times. We made it into a bit of a dusty ball. No worries. It's time to cover. I like to cover with a big square container just because it's the easiest way. You don't have to worry about nothing. Don't have to do this. Don't have to do that. It's cheap. It's like five bucks. Okay, our first 30 minutes is up. I'll give you a little hack. Get a spray bottle like this, $2 shop. And you want to work with slightly wet hands. Otherwise, it's going to stick like that. Now we're going to go under. Just kind of give it a shimmy. And essentially, I'm working from my second knuckle down. I'm not gripping all my hands. It's just going to stick. And so what we're going to do, oh, look at that, right there, a little bit more water. Slowly lift it up, and then we're just dropping it on itself, folding it within itself. We have a log, we're going to do that with the other side. If you need a little bit more water, don't be shy. And 
finally this side. Just leave it, another half an hour. I reckon we have enough strength to only do two folds. And you can really see the texture up top, it's smooth, it's building that strength. And we're gonna do the same thing, north, south, east, and west. The only difference is, I'm gonna roll this into a little ball. It's gonna pop some of the air out, but it's not tight, you don't need to worry. Just get that smooth. Chuck that guy back on. I'm gonna leave it two, three hours until it triples in size. Get on with the rest of my day, probably go out, get some ramen, and I'll catch you all in about three hours. Slowly, I'm gonna let the dough come off the container. And here we go, here's how we look at it. Here's my hand for comparison. Smooth, bubbly, delicious, absolutely massive. This is, this is what we want to see. We're gonna move on to our next step, which is called pre-shaping. Dust a little bit of flour on top, just literally the barest amount. I like to get my hand decently, decently wet for this because we're going to go in one smooth motion, under and flip. We're going to go north, three quarters onto the other side. So every time we fold, we're looking to go past halfway, or just past halfway. So we're going north and south. East and West. There we go, so we have a nice package, nice parcel. Get this a little bit wet again, because we are going to flip. And then you're just going to let this rest, let it do its thing. 20 minutes. Okay, let's finish this up. 20 minutes is done. Make sure you cover it too, by the way. Get a little bit of water on there, a little bit of water on your hand. Same thing, we're gonna just go under, under, under. Flip it, no flour on this time. I like to shape my dough in a rectangle because that's easy as to work with. And we're gonna do the same compass fold, but instead of starting with uh, north and south, we're just gonna go east, three quarters of the way over, and west. You know, you're kind of like pulling it, creating some tension. All right, get my hand out of the way. Pulling it, creating some tension, and then flipping it over. Three quarters on the other side. And so you can see we have quite the cylinder. Now, we're gonna take north, and we're just gonna roll it. I'm using my thumb to really emphasize that seam. And roll, roll, roll. Get your bench scraper again, go through, move it around. What I like to do now is close off the sides, so I just go pinch, pinch, pinch. Other side too, pinch, pinch, pinch. I've got a Benetton, you can find this at Moore Wilson or online, sprinkled with rice flour. Now, where we at? Hand a little bit wet, dough scrape a little bit wet, go under, lift up, and oish into the Benetton. If it sticks to your hand like me, don't worry. It will let go in its own time. I like to just pinch either sides and we're just stitching it to create more tension in the dough. I have a Benetton, these do get expensive. Alternatives are if you have like a big bowl and you just shape it into a circle. If you want like a circle bread, let me know in the comments and I'll Definitely post it for you guys. Bread's one of those things where it does seem like a lot of effort, but once you make bread your bit and make it work in your schedule, bro, you can make bread whenever you want, every fucking day if you want. You can leave it out at room temp for 20 minutes and then go on to baking it and it'll still come out delicious. Okay, it's been a couple hours. We're gonna get into baking. I'll flip you around. Dutch oven into the oven. I'm going to preheat at 230 celsius, fan bake, 30 minutes okay, you can even set a timer look, 30 minutes, just have a peep, you can see it's swollen, smooth, full of air, delicious, all we're going to do, chuck that guy on, this is alarm, makes scoring the bread easier, but I'll turn it, and there's like a natural curve for the bread, I can see it right here, 
you'll develop some bread goggles and all you're gonna do is slice in one smooth motion the smoother the better and last but not least we're gonna douse this in water it's gonna help create steam and give more rise in the Dutch oven okay a little bit of semolina on the bottom you can use cornmeal try old bread made in just like that lid goes on back in the oven 30 minutes covered oh my god that is insane back in the oven to grill get some color on the top 20 minutes that's what we want we want some nice color on the top you can see how high it is this thing is boiling look how look how tall it is Let's zoom you out it's ridiculously tall got a beautiful ear yum okay we're gonna let this cool down room temp i'll come back in an hour cut it up been resting for the better part of half an hour i want to get stuck in dig in to this delicious rugby ball look at this beautiful side crumb color ear it's got the whole lot listen 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 oh what the f Can you believe it? I'm gonna get cut right into this. I'm so excited. She is big. What do you reckon? How are we looking? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Is it gonna be perfect? Is it gonna be holy? Is there gonna be too many chasms? Oh, the smell is incredible. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. And we got the bunnies. We got the bunnies. The easiest way to cut it, you have one half of the bunnies, flip it up, and just go to town, bro. You can cut it as thick or as thin as you like it. We're at my favorite part of the video, and I know it's your favorite part of the video, because all of you get to watch me eat what I just made. Now, you can top your bread with whatever you like. I love this guy right here my absolute supreme favorite thing to put on bread if i didn't get into making bread or baking bread i would have no idea this is this would have just been a mysterious love maybe later in my life i would reconnect with vegemite or something like that but here we go vegemite where we at zoom in buddy that's how i have it butters under the vegemite pack on the vegemite decent amount of cheese slightly melted best way to have it on bread don't add me okay this bite is for each and every single one of you following commenting sharing to your friends trying the recipes oh, to who just get inspired who feel some kind of way about seeing my content I love each and every single one of you as much as I love Vegemite and cheese on homemade toast mmm Mm. You just can't f***ing beat it. If the crust is crusting, it's not overly hard. And it's so flavorful. Fermented bread. Whenever I make bread, I have my make days and then I have my bake days. So it's always like a two-day process for me. Especially sourdough. I never bake sourdough the same day. Even Polish bread. I'll even chuck this guy in the fridge overnight. But I want to show you guys that it's totally possible you can bake it. The guts of the bread is super cloudy. Again, if anything bread, if it doesn't feel like a tit in your mouth, you're doing it wrong. I love the umami punch in the face. I got a whole another one I'm going to eat. But I'm going to leave you all right there. Thank you for watching the entirety of the content. Make sure you do all of the great stuff. Liking it up, sharing to your friends. Comment down below what you like to have or your favorite thing you like to have on toast. Whether it's Vegemite, Marmite, Jam, uh, Dulce de Leche, Strawberries and Cream, Custard. Sub up and I'll see all of you on the next one. Mwah.